Praise God, brothers and sisters. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his mercies. We thank him for sustaining us. He's brought us this far. He's our God. He's our Savior. And he is our friend. He fights battles, invisible battles for us. He knows our enemies. He knows the hindrances. He knows the bad foundations that we have. He knows the mistakes that we have committed knowingly or unknowingly and he is willing to give us a chance only if we accept and turn a new leaf and die to ourselves. How do we die to ourselves? We must surrender to him. And when we surrender and obey his commands, it is easy for him to give us the strength that we need to fight against the flesh. Our flesh is the biggest problem because it is he that leads us astray. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, cannot dwell in a body that is governed by the flesh. We are operating in a world where we do not want to surrender. Not that we don't just want to surrender. Sometimes we are guilty and blind. And so we cannot tell the difference between right and wrong. But our eyes open when we read the Bible. Our eyes open when we pray. Our eyes open when we commune in the house of prayer. Our house opens when we associate with those who believed before us and we don't want to be among the people that think negative we just have to be positive minded and surrender to this god the almighty god until we begin to hear him guide our thoughts guide our work way of life those who know their god remember they shall be strong and they shall do great and might great exploits rather uh, we continue to do bible study today we are going to be looking at acts from chapter 16 and we go uh, up to chapter 17 we continue to see the level of faith, the willingness, the boldness, the children of God, the apostles had, especially in this case, we have Peter, Cyrus, I mean, Paul and Cyrus, and now joined by Timothy. Then he came to Debbie and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. But his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region. For they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. So we see the number of the people that were standing with Paul is increasing. He's also beginning to surround himself with people that were determined, like he was determined. So the Cyrus and Timothy uh, have become his closest associates. Yes, as we grow in Christ, we begin to influence positively many people, and those who believe will come close to those who have led them into believing by opening their eyes. And so, uh, the next thing we see now, there is a call to, Macedonian, to Macedonia. Now, when they had gone through 
Phrygia and, and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in a night, a man of Macedonian stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision immediately, we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. You see, um, when you are totally submitted to the Holy Spirit, and the flesh is dead when God speaks, you will even hear very clearly. So we see that the apostles never did anything except they consulted God about it. And they waited. They did not just consult. They waited for a sign. And so as they were in ministry, they wanted to enter into Asia to spread the gospel, but the angel of the Lord said no. The Holy Spirit said no. It was not yet time. And so God instead led them to Macedonia, and they willingly arose and went into Macedonia and spread the gospel there. So the next item we are looking at is Lydia baptized at Philip. Lydia was a believing businesswoman. She had a successful business saying the fine purple fabrics. She lived in Philippi, a major city in Macedonia. She worshipped God. She attended a prayer meeting with other women on the Sabbath. The Lord opened her heart and she listened to Paul's message. She was baptized along with her household, which includes family and the servants. She urged Paul and Silas to be guests in her home. What we learn from the story of Sir of Lydia is that the Lord reveals more truth about himself when you are obedient to what you already know and believe. Hmm? The Lord reveals more truth about himself when you are obedient to what you already know and believe. What we already know is that Jesus came from the Father to redeem us from sin. And after he had successfully finished his mission here, he returned to the Father, but he did not leave us often. He left us with the Holy Spirit. We know that he has power to forgive us from sins because he with his blood he paid the price when we believe the lord reveals more truth when we obey the lord reveals more truth so lydia uh, therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Sam Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in the city for some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Theatla, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to hear the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Now, 
this is another lady, a great lady that believed and hosted the men of God. God had designed that when the men of God are in ministry, they should not worry where they will sleep, they should not worry what they should eat, because those who do God's work, God does their work as well. So while they were busy serving God, he was busy providing for their needs. And Lydia was not an ordinary woman. She was a businesswoman, very successful. And so the examples like that we find in the Bible encourage us that when you serve God, you cannot lack. And if he wants you to work, you will work and he will make your business a success. Salvation does not make people stupid. Salvation opens your eyes to things you would not ordinarily see with your carnal eyes. So when you see people who are still living in the flesh discussing things that you know differently from the spirit, I would encourage you to not engage into discussing things of God with people that are looking with carnal eyes. Avoid confrontations, avoid discussing God's things with those who are prepared to disagree with you. All you need to do is to seek your God with all your heart and all your mind and soul and now let God teach these people to receive the message that you give. For me, I know that when I preach the gospel, I am preaching to those who God has purposed that when the time comes, they will read the message. Some might even read it 10 years later and it will transform their lives. There is someone, I can assure you, there is someone out there who would be blessed by the words that you're going to tell them. Be a blessing to someone, but not a curse. And so, we see Paul and Silas in prison. This is an amazing part of the gospel, I mean of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, it defines a watch and it reveals the great power of God. Paul and Silas are in prison. Now it happened as we went to pray that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul, uh, followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that they, their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men being Jews exceedingly troubled our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid too many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their seat on the stalks. Wow. Now, so many issues that we are looking at. We are seeing Paul and Silas in the ministry and then i'm assuming this is still philippi where they were and then there is this girl who was possessed by the spirit of divination that was going along with these people shouting or prophesying that they are men of god and encouraging people to listen to them 
And for her, the spirit that she had was a spirit that almost looked so accurate that it was impossible for an ordinary person to doubt this woman because she was only talking, a girl, she was talking about true things. And she was making money for the employers, the wizards and the witches who had sent her. And so it took the grace of God to reveal to Paul that this was a bad spirit. Why? Because it was annoying. It was irritating. A good spirit does not annoy. It brings peace. That is the spirit of the Most High God. But this one, the more she talked, the more Paul got irritated by the lady. And so, he decided, filled with the Holy Spirit, to rebuke the spirit. And when she rebuked it, immediately it left her. What I learned from this word is that we need to be careful the voices we hear. And we need God to help us with the spirit of discernment so that we do not make mistakes. And may God forgive us where we have made mistakes. Because we do not know how to listen and discern properly. So this young girl, they rebuke the demon out of her. And once it is rebuked, now those who ate from her palms are angry. And so what they did, they knew their way around. They knew how they used to do funny tricks to get things done. So they did those tricks and they got Peter and Silas in prison. And then when they were put in prison, they were put in a place where they knew they would not escape. Because I'm sure they were used to the habit of the men of God, the apostles, going to prison. And then they wake up the next morning, the people who were chained and bound leave not bound. Now also, what I learned from this word is that Paul received a backfire. Paul received a backfire. Paul and Cyrus received a backfire. Yes, true, they redeemed the girl, but the power that they were dealing with was so strong because it almost looked like the power of the Almighty God because the woman was able to see and foretell the things the apostles were doing. And because of the power this spirit had, when it was cast out, they reinforced and laid Paul and Silas in prison. So we must be careful that as we fight battles, some of them might backfire. That's why we must stay in the, on, on prayers, in, on our knees. We must stay united together as a body of Christ so that we have a backup team that backs those who are at the front line with prayers and intercession. So Paul and Cyrus are in prison. They delivered the girl, but now they are in chains. And that's what the devil does. The devil wants to bind us at all times. May God loosen all the chains that had been put on our legs, the chains that have tied us around, them, that have tied our, our spiritual arms, hands that have tied anything to, that, are, that is tying anything to us spiritually, such that we might be free to serve God. Because in chains, we are not able to serve God the way we are required to be serving. And so, but then again, when in prison, these men, what did they do? So we need to say, the next part we are seeing that the Philippian jailer saved Paul and Silas are in prison. So we need to see what happens. But at midnight, that is the watch I was telling you about, 
I want you to hold on to this and first remember what happened at midnight in Egypt when God redeemed the children of Israel. He marked, he, author, he ordered the children of God to mark their houses with blood such that when the spirit of death passes through the land, the children of God who lived in Goshen would be saved and those who belonged to Pharaoh their firstborns would die. So the spirit of death came through, but the children of God were redeemed. And so I believe that for me, I understand that midnight is an hour of redemption. God redeems his people, but he also passes destruction, a spirit of death for everything that has remained and gotten stuck on our lives. As we enter into midnight, everything that the devil is planning in our lives has been planning and our lives must die. And so, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosened. And the keepers of the prison awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do you do yourself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light raining and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now they had brought them into their house, into their house, into his house. He set food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God with all his heart. I am sure we all remember that that night when all the firstborns were killed in Egypt by the spirit of death, everyone released the children of God and said, even Pharaoh said, leave my land. And they chased them because they had understood the power that God had. Though their fear was short-lived, because God wanted to destroy and judge the gods, so he led them to now turn back and want to follow them. But in this particular case, Paul and Silas caged in prison. At midnight, they praise and worship. And as they did that, there was a great earthquake. Doors opened, chains fell off the prisoners. And so there is this prison guard who wakes up now from that shock and begins to think that the prisoners have all escaped after seeing all the doors open. But when he was about to kill himself, Paul stops him by telling him that none of the prisoners had escaped. And because of that, he who was scared of death was not scared of death anymore. He decided to release Paul and Silas, and he also asked to be born again. So he did not fear that the enemy would bind him. He left and followed Christ. And that is the idea. People should be able to follow Christ because of the things they see happening in our lives. We must be at a point where people will look at us and say, no, I need to be saved because of the great and wondrous things that God would be doing in our lives.
Paul refuses to depart secretly, and when it was day, the magistrate sent the officer saying, let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrate have sent to you, have, have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly, condemned Romans, and, and they have thrown in us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? Indeed, no, indeed. Let them come with them, come themselves and get us out. And the officers told these words to the magistrate, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So they were out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. Hmm. So after the things that had happened, the people that had thrown these people in prison are beginning to panic. So they want to secretly release the apostles. But now the apostle Paul is not going to let it lie in law. So he said, no, they must release us publicly the same way they had captured us publicly. And yes, it is the, work, the way the devil works. He wants to always have... Uh, the, he wants to humiliate God's people to a level where the world will make fun of them. But when he realizes he's being defeated, he wants to handle something quietly. And yet God is one who handles life as openly as he understands. So we need to be careful as God's children, we should not have anything that is hidden in us. Because any bird that is hidden in us contaminates us. We we'll continue to see in chapter 17 there is preaching at the Theronia. Now when they had passed through Aphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went in to them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that Christ had, a, had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ persuaded, wait, is the Christ and some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of the devotee Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. Wow. So we continue to see um, many people continuously coming to Christ and Paul continuously visiting different kinds of, of, ch of churches and synagogues to continue to preach the gospel and talk about this Jesus Christ. There is an assault on Jason's house, but when the Jews who were not persuaded becoming atheists took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathered, gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they had not find, but when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, Those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them, and these are all and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard the things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Hmm? So, 
those who accused the apostles, they created an impression that these people are contradicting the, way, the word of Moses. Because yes, the apostles preached of eternity, preached of Jesus Christ, and these people had not believed him. So it was evident they would not believe his apostles, and so there was persecution. And so we see continuous gospel at Berea. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fear-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word which all, with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks promised women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preaching, preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens and receiving a commander for Cyrus and Timothy, they came to him with the speed they departed. So the, the children of God continue to, spread, to preach the gospel, but also the persecution was coming after them. Everywhere they stepped, there was an effort for them not to spread the gospel. But their resilience gave a chance to me and you to get saved. The gospel they read is the gospel we read. The witness, there are witnesses that Jesus Christ lived and existed and he took his place and that he wants us to learn to live in his ways. So we must be alert, ready to let God use us when he decides to speak in our lives. We see the philosophers at Athens. Now while Peter waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore he raised, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile wash, wash, worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who kept, happened to be there. Then Saturn Epicurean and Stoin, Stoic philosophers encouraged him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Europaga, saying, May you, we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak, for you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know that these things, therefore, we want to know that this, what these things are. For all the Athens and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Mm. So the gospel continues to spread. Those who questioned it, questioned it. And those who learned something, also learned something. Like today, when we do Bible study, there are those that have consistently followed. There are those who have been doing 10 chapters every day. I'm sure you are about to finish the Bible the third time. So it depends on the speed you've been going to. But in everything that you do, make sure... The devil does not take your place. Refuse the devil and all his antics. Refuse the devil and all his plans. And he will flee from you. Do not be an altar. Do not be a moving altar for the devil to come and operate in you and mess your life up. 
It is not easy to get deliverance, but the good thing is that when you surrender to God and you surrender totally, He will help you, guaranteed. He will open a door for you that no man can shut. He will reveal His power and He does not use a lot of force when He gets things done. He is God. When He steps down, everything obeys Him. Finally, we see the address at Europagas. Paul stood in the midst of the Europagas and said, Men and Athens, I receive, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the words of your worship, I learned I have found an altar with this encryption to the unknown God. Therefore, the one who are uh, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples. made with hands now is he worshipped with men's hands as though we needed anything since he gave to all life breath and all things and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the reappointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they may sound seek so that they should seek the lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as also some of your own po poets have said for we are also his offspring therefore since we are the offsprings of god we ought not to drink to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone something shaped by art and man's devising uh, truly these times of ignorance god overlooked but we command all men everywhere to repent because we have appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance to, all, to this by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead some mocked while others said we will hear you again on this matter so paul departed from them from among them however some men joined him and delivered believed among them dionysius and areopagite a woman named Damaris and others with them. Praise God. The gospel is continually preached. People continue to believe. God continue to do great and mighty exploits. The spoilers are increasing. Those who come to bring confusion with the wrong doctrine are increasing. But Paul is determined. He is determined to sow a seed. And the seed that he sowed then is the seed that has germinated and given birth to so many fruits. We are the result of such determination. We are the result of such boldness. I pray and I prayed that we will be bold in God and we shall obey him and let him work exploits in us. Brother and sister, don't be left out. This is a time for revival. There is something beautiful that God is planning for Uganda. 
pray until something good happens don't be limited don't be frustrated trust that god will help us as individuals as a family but also as a church and as a nation we are at a point where god will do something and those who have not believed until now will believe i pray that god will continue to strengthen his church to take on their mantle and serve god and do the will of god until tomorrow when we meet again it's been an amazing 40 minutes may god bless you have a good night and bye bye